Hey, what's happening YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I'm having a great morning. I appreciate all my new subscribers. Thank you for joining us. And uh, today we are going to be talking about propagating Java Fern. Now, I'm, I've, ha I've had several videos about Java Fern, and that's because despite what you hear, Java Fern in particular are are quite something else that you've got to deal with um, over months and months and months and months. Okay, uh, this aquascape behind me here um, is well mature. It's it's over six months old. Um, even if you're scrolling through videos, just because you see something that's four months old doesn't mean I didn't record it a month before that. Uh, very rarely is a post that I'm uh, a video I make posted, you know, like that day. Um, but uh, I had explained before about how Java ferns, uh, there's a huge misconception about why they're considered easy plants. And the reason for this is they, they are extremely slow growers. So that means they are extremely slow dyers. It takes them a very long time to actually die, even in the worst conditions. Yeah, you know, even if you've set them up to fail, it could take six months or even longer before they actually die. Now, if you uh, separate them accordingly when you get them and plant them properly where each leaf and each rhizome is separated, um, I've already been doing this, but I want to show you some of the upkeep that you need to do um, while it's going through its whole transitional process and melting because they do melt. That's the other misconception. If you buy one that was grown immersed, over time, over months and months and months and months and months of following, it will melt. But each leaf, when it's melting, it may take it six months to die, but while it's melting, it's going to leave you a treat. And that is, the treat is a new baby that has been grown, and while it was growing, it was growing completely submerged in a submerged environment. Uh, therefore, it is completely acclimated to being underwater because it was born that way. So, let me show you. I'm actually going to grab some right now. Yeah, I have a leaf that is almost nearly dead. So, I need to pluck it off and it has a bunch of babies coming off of it. And I I'm going to show you what that will look like. And just so you know, when we're talking about ferns, in general, they're all the same. Um, I mean, they may look slightly different. But they all uh, propagate, they all grow the same, um, they all need the same type of light, which is very low. Uh, when we're talking about low lighting plants, that's why I, I put them uh, and Anubias as uh, more difficult plants than others would say um, because of how long it takes for them to die and then how low you actually need the light. Because they're such slow growers, you need virtually, when they're saying low light, meaning virtually none, as dim as possible, okay? Um, you want it very, almost dark, and um, yeah, they're going to grow slow, and the brighter you have the light, the more quickly the leaves are going to accumulate algae and other things, um, and more quickly a leaf will die and melt off, and then try to grow a new one under lighting that's too bright, you know, so it's just they're, they're not they're not that easy for your typical person who's just starting off. A light is a light to them. You know, they hear low light and low tech, but they don't really understand the difference. OK, but anyway, I'll talk about that on another video. But let's go through the propagation. This uh, one in particular, uh, this Asian water fern that I have growing on this driftwood. It is still in the process. Even though it's been six months, I still have leaves slowly, one by one, who have all been separated and have their own rhizome that are slowly dying but leaving me the little babies that I need to pluck. So um, I'll show you what I'll do here. And I think you got a good view. Um, I'm going to take my, take my scissors. I'm going to do a little snip, 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 snip. All right. So I've got several to choose from. I always go, which one is almost completely black and has grown all the babies that it can possibly grow and it's not going to duplicate anymore. And I found one. So 
I'm going to take this one, snip it off as close to the base where I have it growing as possible, and pull it out. Alright? And here, I will show you. So this was the original leaf that came from a uh, java fern I had purchased at PetSmart. Um, you know, w which they're all grown immersed. Um, e even if you buy uh, java ferns in general from someone online or some YouTuber and, you know, they're propagating them, most of the time they, they propagate them, not underwater, because it's a lot easier to actually propagate them in um, tubs, uh, with a lid with holes where they keep it very humid and there's really moist, damp uh, dirt with uh, different types of peat moss and other things that can hold uh, water. Uh, but anyway, so, and they're, they're easy to propagate. You buy one and look here, this was one leaf. So if I buy one java fern, I probably actually have anywhere from four to ten java ferns that I need to separate. And each leaf could duplicate as many as like this one has duplicated one, two, three, four, five new java ferns. Okay, and now I'm not just going to take this and then snip right here and consider this it. I need to actually uh, pluck this off as delicately as I can. Let me find my tweezers. I should have had that ahead of time. And you want to completely remove it from the leaf. Don't leave it attached to the dead leaf. That's just going to create ammonia and uh, rotting tissue connected to these old rhizomes. So I know this is hard to see, but you can see all of these roots are all, all from the babies growing from the tip. And I'm grabbing the thickest rhizome as I can. And I'm going to slowly, slowly, and there'll be a few still attached to this mother leaf pull away from the leaf. I don't want to leave any of this old dead leaf attached to anything. All right, so there's still more to go, but I have a whole one here. This is one plant. So let me show you what I'm talking about one plant. You see all these leaves are connected to one rhizome? Okay, this is one whole new java fern growing and the rhizomes will continue to grow on both ends and produce more leaves. So it'll grow like a vine in whatever direction, you know, whenever you plant it to something because you do need to attach it to something and it'll grow more leaves. Now, when you buy these, they don't come like this. They come in a bundle and each leaf is separated and snipped and has one tiny rhizome attached to it or it may not even have a rhizome at all. I, in some videos, I've unraveled them and just found a loose leaf which those aren't trash. If you find one loose leaf and it has no rhizome, it's no longer a plant and it's not gonna grow a new rhizome. But however, if you take that one leaf that no longer has a rhizome connected to it, take that leaf and just toss it in your tank. It won't die right away. Like I said, it takes months for it to actually dead, even though it's technically considered dead because it's not, doesn't have a rhizome or roots anymore, but it'll still duplicate babies. Now, you'll know where it's duplicating babies because it'll have little dots. It looks like little bumps, like little warts, and those are where the babies come from. Uh, I'll know when one's ready to go. Once it's produced um, nearly a half dozen babies, at that point, it, it's done, and then it's starting to turn black. It's not going to grow any more babies anywhere down here. It is, it is officially fully dead, and the babies are now sucking all the nutrients off of this. So I found multiple plants and like I said I don't want to leave the old mother leaf attached to it because it is rotting and you don't want that rotting leaf attached to the newborn plant or its rhizomes because it collects its nutrients from the rhizomes so see if you can get a good look here see how I'm slowly pulling the leaves away I mean the the roots away from the leaf. I don't want to rip it. Very slow and delicately am I letting the roots slide off. And there we go. 
and the only thing left if you can even see it is one leaf that was starting to grow a new baby now it is actually not ready to be plucked or propagated until it has multiple roots coming from it if it's just a leaf growing off a leaf it's not ready for propagation it's still growing so actually because it is actually attempting to grow one more it may complete that process so in that case I'll just drop it in the tank let it float in a couple weeks if I start to see some roots growing off that one tiny leaf you know uh, then I'll know it's it's still going through its process of growing the baby so I officially have two full plants that I propagated off of that one leaf see there's one rhizome this is the rhizome okay and it has three leaves growing off of it so that's one new plant and I can attach it I'm actually gonna grow it off of this cholo wood so I'm gonna attach it here and I just want like a string of leaves growing off here so here was one you can see the rhizome starting to go and then here was the second one you can see the whole rhizome and how it's growing multiple leaves that's how java ferns grow do they don't grow in those nasty bundles that you get that you have to separate and um, yes a lot of these big leaves on here are the original leaves and over the last six months one by one I've been pulling off dead leaves and separating the new aquatic babies and planting them in new spots or just simply re-gluing them you know to the spot where they were where they were coming from and you can glue underwater if you're using the proper glue you can put the glue on your baby and go underwater very quickly because the water activates it and press it against where the old leaf was and it'll grow where you had propagated it from or in my case I'm just propagating them and spreading them out into other tanks so there's your quick uh, rundown and you know I know for me uh, quick rundowns aren't really quick 10 minute long videos plus but I show you descriptively how to do it you know pulled it from the tank and slowly show you the proper way to do it because if you just rip it off and leave any of the old mother leaf attached to it it can potentially rot the new rhizome of the new baby plant so it is a very slow separation process and then like before attaching it you'll just split the roots glue it or tie it with some string to your new whatever and you've got your new plant and yes they grow extremely slow these plants can get huge they get very huge they just it takes a very long time to get there so anyway I hope this uh, video helped you out and I hope you're having a fantastic day and if you're having a bad day like always get up and do something about it don't sit there in the dumps stop right now with this video for the last three hours you've been scrolling through YouTube videos, stop right now, do something else. Get up and go for a walk, and if you haven't already, start aquascaping. Okay, they have deals going on right now at Petco and uh, PetSmart, dollar a gallon. That'll go on for the next two months. So in that case, I'm gonna post this video today because that's going on. You can get out there right now and get a 60 gallon tank and go nuts, all right? so. Thanks again for watching and thank you to all my new subscribers. Have a great day.